we've done in uh, in SOA is that we, we always use the analogy that if we um, take an order, that we order wine from Tesco's, for example, we'll use Tesco as an example. When we order wine from Tesco's um, and we want to, and, we, and we've had, well, obviously we are EDI with Tesco's where they will send their order electronically to us and they want us to respond. Um, as soon as we receive the order and we respond that order and we, and we start to respond with dates and that over our supply chain, oops, what we need to do is that um, we need to commit to those dates because all of a sudden now, instead of having that verbal phone conversation with the buyer at Tesco's, they've got stuff now in writing that we've agreed to do. So it makes their KPIs very easy to measure. So you've lost that, I guess, that, that, that human relationship in the process. We've now turned to a cold supply chain. Um, one of the things we um, have done in our supply chain across there is, is that we uh, we focused on saying that when going this way, there's a danger inside the organisation that um, not all customers can get the true customer experience from Australian vintage. We want to we, we want to be able to give our customers the ability to say that we are um, uh, we. We treat you Tesco's in this manner, or um, Coles in this manner, and we'll treat our restaurants in this manner. There's a, a, a cost associated with the way we've docked each of our customers, and what we've what we've looked at, what we've actually done uh, uh, within our SOA there is that um, we've we've not only taken the integration between each of our stuff between our systems as data integration, as I guess the first stage of what SOA does, and a few rules. We've actually um, created um, a behaviour profile around our our, our SOA. What I mean by behaviour profile is that um, we've got, uh, uh, we, we basically categorise, we profile each of our customers in the organisation. And what we're trying to do is a, a, a human being or, or our, um, our negotiations at the front would effectively say, for example, Tesco's, we would, we would put a, a profile against service, we put a profile against um, quantity, a carbon, cost and profit. So for each, say, say for those five characteristics, we would weight. A, um, a scorecard against them. We'd say, look, because we're dealing with Tesco's, they're a, they're a service number one to us, cost sensitive, about a three, we might say profit, we're keen on the profit on them, so we're gonna make them a, a, a number two. HR impact, now um, an HR impact in a company is where a human being might interact with them. We might say, look, with Tesco's, we, we wanna uh, remove the human beings from interacting too much, so we, we might make them a five to say, look, that's not important, we sort of wanna move around them. Um, and carbon, we might say, look, they're a number one because their wine actually has a carbon sticker on it. As we execute our supply chain through the organisation, when the order comes in or, or an order uh, starts to get looked at about um, how, how, how do we uh, supply the quantity from this order, so Tesco's may order, say, a thousand cases of um, uh, AB or red wine. What, what we can do is um, we use a behaviour profile to um, let the computer system um, effectively act like a human being. So it's trying to engage, um, uh, does anyone actually, just a cut there, anyone know uh, uh, what those grapes are? Can anyone pick the variety? Just a cut? No. No. You, you can actually tell by the leaf of the grape. The leaf, the leaf actually describes what varieties look like on the vineyard. It, it's Pinot Noir. Sort of that interest, I'll cut. So, uh, <laughs> so, as we execute the supply chain, Tesco's, our, our, our process at Tesco's is we would receive a, uh, an order electronically, we would authenticate the order, say yes you are Tesco's, we would credit check that order. All these are separate steps in uh, a checklist of, of what we would do to Tesco's. Uh, and the next order comes in, our next step comes in and said, um, do we have the quantity to supply this order? In a normal business situation, uh, a person would either first look to see, do we have the quantity in the warehouse? Do we have the quantity in many warehouses that we could accumulate and supply that order? Do we have the quantity that's actually hitting our uh, packaging line? Is the quantity uh, actually available from the wine in tank? So all these decisions are going through the head. What, what we're looking at doing in there is we're trying to appropriate the, the cost that has in the organisation to do that with the actual service that we want to give that customer. So for example, Tesco's come in and I said to Tesco's that they're a service number one, but I've got to be uh, a cost number three and a profit number two. Well, what we would do there, these are effectively rules that they'll go through. So Tesco's come in and say, is the available, is the stock, a thousand cases available in our DC warehouse, for example. We would say, if the answer is no, um, we would then say, well, if this was a restaurant, we might say, look, uh, we can't supply the order this week. 
we have to wait till the DC warehouse gets the stock in. But because it's Tesco's, we would move down to another decision. We would say, well, because you're service level one, uh, let's conduct a new with condition. Let's say, all right, is the is the stock in these level two warehouses, and I can actually cross stock them into one to achieve the order. If the answer is still no, and because they service level one, we then say, well, can we sniff the packaging line and see is the stock coming down in the next two weeks? If it is, we'll go back to Tesco's and say, yes, we can supply that order. Now. Even though we've done that one, what I've done as an organisation, which is probably, it, it can come out now in a KPI, is I've put pressure now on the packaging lines, which didn't exist before. Before the, before the packaging line, we generally just do this stuff and move it to a DC. But I've actually committed that stock in the packaging line to that order, and I told Tesco's they can have it. So I'm starting now to add different controls down my IT systems, and these are the things there where it starts to bring complexity into your network there, where the computers are starting to make decisions now, and the humans around, this decision making is starting to get a little bit lost as to what's going on. So what do we do to get around this? So we've moved uh, from our uh, position, we've gone to solar, we've done this basic integration between legacy systems and all this. We started to bring uh, behavior within to our solar. So we saw that uh, we call this more agility. So it's solar with behavior. Um, and we, to, to control this, we need to visualize our solar a bit better. We need to see it up now in more reports. But the difference between so it's not an end of day report, it's not an end of month report you're looking at, it's real time. Things are moving in the system. So we adopted a product <coughs> called Oracle BAM system. All Oracle BAM is, it's, a, it's obviously some dashboards in real time, but what it's doing, it's, it's sniffing all these um, processes down there, but it's, it's monitoring KPIs which a business can understand around it. For example, um, I, I spoke to you about the behavior profile. We, have, we might have an account manager uh, which would look after Tesco. So they're responsible for the relationship with Tesco. So we've got one for Coles, we've got one for Woolworths. What they're interested in is not every single order going through the system. They want to know overall, am I supplying um, Tesco's throughout my entire supply chain or, or Coles as to what was intended or what was agreed at the time. And what, what they can do up there is we actually, and we'll show you in a minute um, during Franco's presentation, but um, on the screen there, we basically have a, a number of stoplights up there, red, green or amber. Uh, and what the Coles person can do is they can drill on this damn ba um, BAM dashboard and they can simply just watch the behavior profile going and just see where I'm up to. So from a service position, am I green, red or amber? From a cost position, am I green, red or amber? And remember, we're dealing with sales people here, so we're not gonna put any other complex KPIs off the screen. We're gonna do basic colors and we're gonna fix them to their basic behavior profile. Uh, we, we are, we're looking to take this to the next step, um, uh, where as a business, and to control the way sales will um, do their negotiations um, out there, is that we want them to include the ability for us to serve as a customer type of negotiation. So for example, if we're talking to uh, Tesco's, we say, look, you pay 50 bucks for a case of wine today, but for 50 bucks, we made you a service level one to do that, which means that we offer you these kind of guarantees and service. We want to be able to say, a part of the negotiation, if you want this one at 45 bucks a case, we need to make you a service level two, and this is what it means. Now, you put the negotiation to the buy on the table, and they understand and agree to that, we can lock them down to service level two, but instead of leaving that into the business, who've always seen the, 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 the traditional side of Tesco as a service level one, I can readjust uh, my, my uh, by changing that to, it'll then negotiate my uh, decision making and each of my, I guess, um, uh, process points throughout the supply chain through there, and actually um, uh, uh, not make that decision to look at the packaging line, which adds another cost to my business. So you can, by just changing some behavior matrix there, I can target cost and profit in that to the actual order of the actual customer from what we intended. Sounds complicated uh, as we go through, but the principles are that we would set, uh, we'd typically set a, a customer up on our JD system, which is a normal CRM. We would give that customer profile, this, the six characters, we'd put a one to five in each of the boxes in there. I give this to my architects and the Java developers. They'd be sitting in um, um, the Oracle um, stack and the WebLogic area there. And as they write in all their JPDs or, or their process things there, they're using the concept of rules engines. That, and instead of just saying, is quantity greater than this, they're saying, is quantity greater than this and service is equal to a one, do this. So their if statements are starting to bring behavior into it. And that's all, it, that's all it's doing in there. Yet the power of it to take that, record what actually what service level was executed on and what service level they have and, and bring that collection of many data up to a, 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 a monitor or business activity monitor, uh, it, it means a lot to the business. And it makes a huge difference to our consistency in service out there. 
Uh, so that gives a, a bit of a feel for what we're doing. How close are we to that position?